Now's the time of year people start pulling out their Christmas decorations and donating items that they don't use anymore. So I thought it would be fun in this episode to go to the thrift store and find some items that we can give new life to. I hope you enjoy! This Goodwill is about an hour away from my house, but it was well worth the drive because they had plenty of Christmas items out. And the first one that caught my eye was this gorgeous metal Christmas tree. Now I found this cute item for $4.99. It has the little votive candle holder in there, or you could put a tapered candle in there. But I'm going to disassemble it, take everything apart, and give it a good cleaning. And we're going to do something with this. I'm not quite sure yet. This is like a ring holder that has like apples and stuff on it. But we're going to do something cute. The first thing I need to do is make sure I can get all of these pieces apart. This is actually like a candle ring. So I was able to pull that and the bottom off and take that glass votive candle holder out and of course i'm not going to reuse that candle i'll probably use a battery operated one now everything needs a really good cleaning and the best way to clean anything to make sure you get any grime off of it is to use one part vinegar to two parts water so i just put a cup of vinegar and two cups of water and then i will put my washcloth in there and wring it out real good then i can go over this entire piece and make sure there's nothing sticky on there that's going to prevent any of my paint from sticking to it. I'm going to clean this thoroughly inside and out and dry it down. And this is also works really well for the glass candle holder. It will get it really clean inside and out. So once I have all of that done, I'm going to take this outside and give it a coat of spray paint. I am using Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color matte black. This is just something that I already had on hand. I set this up on my plastic turntable. If you do a lot of spray painting, I highly recommend one of these turntables. It makes it so much easier to paint items you don't have to walk around them constantly painting you can just turn the table and keep spraying once that was completely dry i decided to take out some gold leaf rub and buff and you can find this at your local craft store a little bit goes a really long way i'm going to be applying it with just a paintbrush and this is not a paintbrush that you're probably going to be able to reuse so just use an old one i wanted to be able to get the details on the star at the top and i'm going to do that on both sides i'm not going for complete coverage because i do want some of the black to show through that gold i'm going to go over each one of those stars as well as the candy canes on the tree and then it dries pretty fast. So by the time I'm finished going all the way around, the first side's already dry. Now it's time to work on that candle wreath. So I originally was gonna pull off the items that I didn't wanna use. I was gonna keep those pine cones in the greenery. And I have these small picks from Hobby Lobby that were maybe like a dollar, maybe a dollar 50 because they were 50% off. I pulled those apart so that I could attach these to the candle ring. Unfortunately, I only had two of those picks. I think it would have been really pretty if I'd had three to go all the way around. I filled in some of those bare spots with some larger pine cones and the greenery off of the picks. Then I remembered I have this beautiful 12 inch flocked wreath from Hobby Lobby, originally $6, but they were having 50% off sale, so I got it for $3, and I thought that these picks would look beautiful in there, and then I tucked in a few of those smaller pine cones from the original candle ring and some of the larger pine cones. Then I could set this directly on top of my candle holder, add in my glass votive, of course I'm using a battery operated candle, and then place the tree on top. This is how it turned out.
So I found this beautiful candle holder. It has like a tray to it. Um, I can probably repurpose some of the greenery and some of the berries. It has a cute deer. Well, actually it has three. You can't really see it. And I paid $4.99 for this. I'll likely just disassemble it. I want to paint this and do a little bit more detail work to it. I'm not sure how they have this stuff in there, but we're going to take it apart and see what we can make of it. I started by pulling all of the greenery and berries out and let me tell you there were a lot of those in there. I wasn't sure how or what was holding them in there but as I got most of that removed I saw that it was styrofoam so I thought this would be really easy to just take my putty knife and pop out. No it wasn't. It was really in there. So I took my putty knife all the way around the edge and was finally able to break a piece off and then realized that there was some sort of silicone underneath it holding the styrofoam in. So I thought, okay, well, let me just get all the styrofoam out first and then I'll worry about that silicone stuff. So I just kept breaking pieces off until I was able to get all of that styrofoam out. And then I took my putty knife and just kept working underneath that silicone until I was able to break small pieces of it free. And it did take quite a bit of effort and arm strength because my hand got pretty tired. But it seemed like it was a really long time to do, but it was really only like 20 minutes to take everything out of this tray. I used my utility knife to get to those detailed areas where the metal meets the bottom of the tray, and I was finally able to get everything out. I placed all of the greenery, pine cones, and berries in a basket because I can reuse those in future projects and it was a basket full. Now it is time for me to clean this metal tray and I'm gonna do that with my vinegar water solution. So that's one part vinegar to two parts water and go over this entire piece. There is some dried wax on the top where the candles used to be and a great way to remove that and make sure you don't have any candle wax residue is to heat it up with your hair dryer and once it starts melting, take your vinegar water solution cloth and wipe that off. This is going to clean it off really well so that you'll be able to paint it. I'm going to take this outside and starting on the bottom, give it two thin coats of a matte black spray paint. Once that dries, I can then flip it over and spray the rest of this piece. I allowed mine to dry overnight and now I'm going to take some gold leaf rub and buff and a paintbrush and start by applying this around the rim where the pillar candles will sit. I'll do that for all three. I'm also going to apply this around the edges of each one of the deer on the front and the back. This is how it's looking so far and that gold rub and buff really made those deer pop out. So I did the exact same thing on both sides. Now I'm going to take that paintbrush and go around the inside rim of the tray because it's pretty detailed and I don't want to smear it. I'm just going to use the paintbrush on the inside rim but I can use my finger on the outside rim and I'm going to do this around the entire tray. The gold rub and buff dries very fast. Now it's time to decorate the tray. I'm gonna use some of these greenery picks. These came from Timu in a large package, but you can also find these at Dollar Tree. They just tend to have a little bit more glitter on them. I'm gonna place one in each corner, and I have a few more left over that I can use for fillers. This is a pick that I found at Hobby Lobby. It's nice and full, and it was 50% off, so it was only $2.50. And I have two of those, so I'm going to place one on each side and kind of intertwine them around the metal in the middle of the tray. 
I also have two picks that I believe came from Walmart for a dollar each. They match very well with the theme that I'm going for. I'm going to use those to kind of fill in any bare spots and also use the rest of those greenery picks to, again, fill in any areas that I see need some more greenery. Then I'm going to use these frosted pine cone ornaments from Dollar General. You can get eight for a dollar. You can just very easily pull the twine off the back. And I'm going to tuck these all around the tray, filling in any kind of openings or gaps that I see. And I did open a second box and used a few of those. So in total with the greenery and the pine cones, it was maybe $10 worth of items in there. Now I'm going to use my battery operated remote control pillar candles to set on top and this is how it turned out. I found six of these beautiful grapevine star wreaths. Now these were $1.99 a piece. You could tell they've got a little bit of age on them. And I kind of want to do something and create this to hang under the outdoor lights on the end of my garage. So I'm going to probably head over to Hobby Lobby and see if I can find some items to embellish this with and just give it an overall new look. They have some really cute pieces on here, so I will be saving the greenery and the berries, but I want a little bit darker of a red rather than that bright red. So I'm gonna pull all of the embellishments off of each of these stars, and it did have some hot glue left on there, so I'm likely just gonna flip these over and use the back side. This is how I wanna lay them out. I kinda of want them to be hanging in a set of three. So I'm going to be using these gorgeous like brass gold bells. This is a pick that I found at Hobby Lobby. It was on sale for $2.50. It had four bells with it. So I did have to pick up two picks to be able to have six bells. They come off really easily. And I'm gonna be using some of this gold rope from Hobby Lobby and it matches perfectly with the these bells. I want them to dangle in the center of each of the stars so I'm just going to double knot that right at the top of the bell then I'm going to place it about center way of the star and then I can wrap it around the top part and tie that but leave the excess because I'm going to use that excess piece of rope to attach it to the bottom of the second star. And I want to have about two inches between each of the stars. So I'm just going to tie that right there at the bottom. And then I can adjust it to make sure I have the two inches so that everything will line up. Then I can double knot that. And to make sure that it's really secure, I'm going to add some hot glue right where I tied those pieces as well as where the bell is. Then I can cut my excess twine off or rope. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing for the second bell and attach it in the second star and then I can take that piece of gold rope and add that to the top star. And I'm just going to continue to do this until I have a bell in the center of each of the stars. Now for the top piece I need to create a loop so that I'll be able to hang this up and again I'm going to make sure that I add some hot glue to those pieces so that they don't come apart. I'm going to be using this greenery pick from Walmart for 98 cent. I'm going to pull three pieces of that off as well as this deep burgundy colored berry pick from Hobby Lobby, which was on sale for $1.50. I'm going to be placing the greenery from one corner of the star down towards the bottom. I'm going to do that using some hot glue. Then I can place my berry pick on top of that 
And then I also have some table scatter that I bought from Hobby Lobby last year. It has some frosted greenery pieces, pine cones, and styrofoam balls in it. I thought it would be really pretty to take three of those frosted greenery pieces and hot glue those at the very top to add a little pop of white but also kind of cover up those stems. Then for the next star, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to do it on the opposite side. Once I have that done, I'll do the third star and I'm going to do it on the same side that I did the bottom star. Using some red and black plaid ribbon, I'm just going to make a very simple bow and leave some long tails on there. Then I can take those tails and fold them upwards to create some waves on each side. So depending on how big you want your waves to be will be how much you fold upwards. And because this is wired ribbon, it's gonna hold its shape when I pull that back out. And I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. Then I'm going to dovetail each end of the bow and attach this to the top star. Now I did make two sets of these identical and I'm going to hang these outside. Now if your house has vinyl siding like mine does, I like to use these clips and you can find these at Amazon and I have this listed in my Amazon store. You can take this little piece, put it underneath your siding and then you can hang something up and you don't have to put any holes on the outside of your house. You just find where the siding overlaps each other and then you can slide that clip directly underneath it and then it'll snap and then you can push it down and you can hang whatever you want to up outside. I hope you enjoy today's projects and if you have a favorite let me know in the comment section down below because I always love to know which one is your favorite. If you haven't subscribed already I would love for you to click that subscribe button right below the video. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please take care and I will see you guys next time.